What's going on everyone? It is Friday, which means it's Razor Chroma Profile Day, and it's also the month of October. So today I'm bringing you guys a Halloween themed Razor Chroma Profile. For today's design, I decided to make a Witch's Brew themed design for you guys. So with Razor's Chroma RGB software, I was able to replicate and make a bubbling green colored cauldron and it's actually a really cool and unique uh, idea and I'm sure a lot of you guys will be using it on your keyboards as always in the description there will be a link to my website where you guys can go and download this on your guys's Razer Chroma devices but if you guys want to know exactly how I did it then stay tuned I'm going to show you guys a tutorial of how I did it step by step we're going to just jump straight into the tutorial with this one this one is Witch's Brew Alright guys, here we go with the Witch's Brew Razor Chroma Profile. First thing we're going to do within the Studio module is we're going to add a brand new profile. Click on those three dots and hit Add. And the first thing we're going to start working on on this profile is our background. And we're going to change the Spectrum Cycling layer to a Wave layer. Just click those three dots, change it to a Wave. Double click any lighting zone and hit the Delete key. This will erase all of the effects on your keyboard and give you a blank slate. Next, I'm going to hold control and I'm just going to scroll wheel in here and just focus on my keyboard for right now. With this wave layer selected, we're going to select all of the keys on our keyboard. We're going to hold control and we're going to deselect the interior lighting zones on our keyboard. So we're going to select everything that's on the outside edges of our actual keycaps, as well as outside lighting if you guys have that. I'm going to click on the color drop down here, and I'm going to choose this three node pattern. And on the outside of our keyboard, we're going to have a purple color. So this far left node, we're going to have a really dark purple color. So hex code I have here is 12021F. And on the, on the outside nodes, so this first node and the third node, we're going to have that dark purple color. In the middle, we're going to have a little bit lighter purple color than the previous one. So still pretty dark, but um, there is some sort of difference here, and you will see it on your keyboard itself. So with that done, I'm going to click off of this little window here, and I'm going to angle this at... 135 degrees and then I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna deselect my lower right and upper left half of the keyboard so I'm gonna deselect this upper left section here and I'm gonna deselect my lower right section here so just like this I've deselected those areas and with the lower left and right selected I'm going to change the angle on these to just 45 degrees and then I'm gonna hit save then with these selected I'm gonna hold control and press C to copy the effect that we put on those keys and I'm going to select this lower left portion of our keyboard here the uh, lower left interior portion that we haven't made an effect on yet. And then I'm going to hold control. And I'm going to select my upper right portion of the interior keycaps here. With those selected, I'm going to hold control and press V to paste in that purple effect that we've had. And I'm going to click on my color gradient. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to change it from purple to green. So on the outsides, we're going to have a dark green node. And then on the inside, we're going to have a, another dark green node, but a little bit lighter. And actually, I'm going to change this from um, being a little bit lighter here. Actually, I'm going to change it to this dark green, and I'm going to make it darker than this dark green. So we got a really dark green with some lighter green nodes on the outside. And I'm going to hold control and press C to copy that. And now while still holding control, I'm going to just select the inner portions of our keyboard. This deselects 
what we previously just put an effect on. And I'm just gonna select those to deselect those. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna hold control and press V to paste in the effect that we just made. But actually I'm gonna hold control and press V again because you can see I don't have my angle value here. If I paste it in again, it'll give me my value here. It's a little bug with snaps. But anyways, with these, the lower right and the upper left portion selected, we're gonna double click and we're gonna change the angle to 135 degrees. And we're gonna hit save. So what we just made is kind of like a diamond effect inside of our keyboard here. Oh, real quick, let's double click to select all of these and we're gonna check the split option. So same thing with this other portion here, double click, make sure that's split. And same thing with the purple too. We're gonna make sure we have a split wave on here. So we have a split wave on all of these. We're gonna hit save. So now what you should see in, in the middle of your keyboard here is kind of like a, a diamond shape going towards the outside of your keyboard. And it just kind of creates a little bit of motion with your RGB lighting effect. That's all we're gonna do for this background layer. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add that bubbling effect that you see the main part of this design. So I'm gonna rename this layer that we just made into background. And now I'm gonna add a brand new wave layer. And I'm gonna rename this new wave layer to boils. Okay, so this is gonna be our green boils that are on our keyboard. With this layer selected, I'm gonna hold control and I'm just gonna select out um, a little circle of seven keys right here, okay? So you've got a little tiny circle right here on our keyboard. This is gonna be our very first bubble. And we're going to make our speed on this a six. And we're gonna make sure that this is angled up at zero degrees so that we can get our timing down for this. So once we have our properties set to a six speed and a zero angle, we're going to start work on our, on our color gradient. Click that color gradient. We're gonna choose this five node pattern right here, all right? So with this five node pattern, we're gonna make the first three nodes transparent, okay? The first three nodes on our color gradient are gonna be transparent. Fourth node is gonna stay green, and our last node here is gonna be transparent. Uh, the green node we're gonna drag up against the right node, just kind of sandwich all four on the right side all together. They're all sandwiched over here. This node is gonna stay put. Okay, so this third node, we're only, we only place that there just to create a space. So we're gonna delete that. And this just lets our green color kind of fall off, and kind of create like a, a smooth transition off, right? Okay, so this is gonna set up our start of our first boil. We're gonna hold control, deselect that middle R lighting zone gonna click on our color gradient we're gonna with this node selected we're gonna hit the addition symbol and we're just gonna squeeze everything in around this transparent node right here drag everything over and then that transparent node we're gonna delete okay so this just moved all of our nodes on the right side down to the left by one spot okay and that just sets up our timing so that the middle of the boil lights first and then everything around that middle lighting zone will light after it, okay? But we do have to make each horizontal row of keys unique in property value. So all of these ones that I currently have selected have the same exact property value. We gotta make each horizontal row unique. So I'm gonna hold Control and deselect the D and the F key. Click on our color gradient, and that's what this transparent node is for. We're just gonna drag that down the timeline, which makes the property value of these four keys that I have selected different from the bottom two, okay? And that just allows the, the wave to start at the same exact time on each horizontal line, okay? So hold Control, deselect the next horizontal row up, click on our color gradient, and we're just gonna drag that down the list a little bit more even. Just like that. So now that will finish our very first boil animation for our RGB lighting. See, we got a boil on our keyboard. 
Now we're gonna start working on our second one. So we're gonna select one of these two bottom effects that we made, control C to copy that. And we're going to paste it on a second circle that we make over here. So control V to paste it on there. Click on our color gradient here, and we're just gonna drag the nodes down our color gradient meter here. Okay, this node we're gonna hit the addition symbol on and just kind of sandwich everything in here just like we did before, but we're just further down the gradient here. I'm gonna select this transparent node here and hit the delete. And now we're just starting a brand new boil animation just further down our color gradient. A whole control, deselect this middle lighting zone and I'm going to select my color gradient, hit the addition symbol here, and just drag everything in around that node once again. Hit the delete key on that node to remove it. And we're going to make each horizontal row unique here. So hold control, deselect this bottom row, on our color drop down, drag the transparent node over. Control, deselect the next horizontal row, click on our color drop down drag that node over as well. That will finish our second boil. So now we're just gonna continue on and create a few more of these boils until we have a animation that is looping, okay? So we wanna use up this whole gradient bar. So we're gonna click on one of these two effects that we did down here, hold Control, press C. Next we're gonna select um, another group of keys that we're going to make a third boil. I'm actually gonna choose these ones right here. I'm gonna paste in the effect that we just made and just kind of drag it down the gradient bar here a little bit more. Drag this all down. I'm gonna click on this node and hit the addition. Drag this over and delete that node. All right, this is gonna start our third boil. I'm gonna hold control, deselect the middle, click our color gradient, hit the addition, drag that over. Sandwich all these in, delete this node, okay? Hold control, and we're gonna make each horizontal line unique. Transparent node, control, deselect the next row, remove the transparent node. And that completes our third boil. We're gonna copy the effect that we did here, and we're gonna make a fourth one, so Click on the eight lighting zone here, and I'm gonna choose all the keys around it. I'm gonna hold control and paste that last effect we made there. And just drag everything down the color gradient a little bit more. Okay, on this node, hit the addition, drag that over. Delete this node out right here, and we'll start with this for our fourth boil. Hold control, deselect the eight lighting zone, click our color gradient, hit the addition, sandwich all these in, delete this node right here, and we're gonna hold control, deselect this bottom row, move the transparent node. And that completes our fourth boil. I'm gonna copy the effect that we made there and make a fifth one right here on our home keys. Hold control and paste in that last effect we made and move down the color gradient a little bit more. Addition here and delete that node. This sets up our fourth, sorry, our fifth boil here. We're gonna hold control, deselect the end key Gonna click on our color gradient and we're gonna hit the addition, drag that in, drag this, drag that, sandwich them all, delete this node, and hold control, deselect our bottom row, click on our color gradient, and we're just gonna drag our transparent node over. So this finishes our fifth boil. And we're gonna make one more. So we're gonna copy the effect that we made there with Control-C. 
And I'm going to select these five lighting zones down here. Full control and press V to paste our effect on there. I'm going to click on our color gradient. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drag all of these nodes over to the left. So all four of them. This last node, I'm going to hit the addition symbol and just give ourselves a transparent node to play around with. Okay, we actually need to add another transparent node in here. So I'm just going to drag these nodes over. I'm going to click on this node and hit the addition. Which gives us another one in there. And then drag these back over. Okay, I'm just, we can leave this one here. Um, this one right up next to the green one, we're going to hit the delete on that to give us a space here. This is what's going to set up our sixth and final boil of our cauldron. We're going to hold control, deselect the in lighting zone, and we're going to click on our color gradient and drag these nodes all the way down to the left. Delete the second node right here. And we're going to hold control, deselect our bottom row, click our color gradient. And we're going to move this transparent node over a little bit. All right. And that is what's going to complete our boil animation on our cauldron design. So as you can see, we have some boils going off. For the, our next effect layer, we're going to add a, let's see here. We are going to add a reactive. So let's go ahead and add that. Um, and for this reactive, we're going to select all of our lighting zones on our keyboard. We're going to click this color gradient and we're going to choose a really light purple color. Okay. We're going to hit save. So this just gives a nice little purple contrast to our design whenever we press the keyboard. Okay. We're also going to add a ripple layer to this design. This ripple layer actually needs to be underneath the reactive. So I'm just going to grab this ripple layer and drag it below. Okay. Because we want our reactive to be seen when we press the keyboard and not the ripple. Okay. So with this ripple effect, it's going to be kind of a unique effect and it's going to be a horizontal line effect. So we're going to select all of our keys that are inside of our cauldron because we want it to look like our green liquid inside of our cauldron is rippling right whenever we touch it okay so with these keys selected we're going to click on our color gradient and we're going to choose a three node pattern here okay three nodes this first node right here we're going to make light green okay light green second node we're going to make a darker green and we're going to drag that all the way up against the green and we're going to just separate it from the green just a little tiny bit. That's it. Might be too much. Just like that. Just a little tiny, the tiniest gap that you can possibly put in there. Okay. This third node, we're going to drag that right up against the screen. And we're going to make it transparent. All right. So you got a tiny little sliver of green color on the left side of our color gradient. I'm going to click off of that. We're going to change our width to 200%. And we're going to reduce our speed on this down to 6. Okay. Um, we're going to change our playback from on press to on selected keys because we only want it to ripple when we press one of these selected keys. Okay. So this is going to finish all of our properties for this ripple effect. We'll hit save. Now, if you press any of those green keys, it will ripple out just a little ways. You can see what adding the transparent node here does is it prevents the ripple from going all the way to the edge of the keyboard. Your ripple only goes a small distance and then it fades away. It doesn't continue traveling on all of your devices. So it only gives you a little bit of an area ripple instead of actually rippling the whole keyboard. Okay. But we're going to make it do each horizontal line. 
So I'm actually gonna double click this lighting zone to select everything. And I'm gonna click on our color gradient. I'm gonna hold control, deselect this top line, click on our color gradient again, select this last node and hit the addition sign. This gives us a transparent node here to play with. We're gonna make every horizontal line here uh, unique and property value. So hold control, deselect this next row down, our color gradient, drag it over. Control, select this next row, deselect rather, click our color gradient, drag that node over. So this makes all of our horizontal rows unique. And now when I press any given key on our keyboard, let me hit save real quick. Let this load up and you can see if I press any green key, the green key, the key will light purple, which is from our reactive layer. And it will also ripple out from that key just a little ways on each horizontal row. But the last thing we're gonna do for this effect is we're going to add an audio meter. So we're gonna click on this audio meter here, to add, a, add it to the top. And we're going to select all of our green keys. Okay, so all of our green lighting zones. And then we're gonna hold control once again. And we're gonna select our whole keyboard. Okay, what that does is it selects everything except for our green part of our cauldron. Okay, we're gonna click on our, uh, before we click on our color gradient, actually, we're gonna boost this to 1.5. All right, click our color gradient. We're gonna click this two node color pattern, the black and the green. I'm gonna drag this left node over just a tiny bit here. Actually, we're gonna go all the way over here to the right, okay? So we have a small little section here of green and then drag the nodes right next to each other. So color snap those together. This second node that's green we're going to make uh, lighter purple okay lighter purple this other node that's here we're going to make dark purple okay so you got a dark purple on the left side light purple on the right okay hold control and we're just going to deselect all of our lighting zones that are on the outside edges of our keyboard here okay so deselect all the outside ones we're going to click on our color gradient and we're going to drag these over a little tiny bit okay hold control deselect another lighting zone out on each side select these just like that and we're going to click our color gradient and we're going to drag these over a little bit more Control, deselect the next row out. That's good there. Deselect these. And I'm just going to drag the gradient over a little bit. And you're just going to do this all the way till you get to the middle. So deselect a few off the end here. Select a few off the end here. Click the color gradient, drag them down. Deselect some more off the end. I'm not going to touch this space bar until we get to the very middle of it, okay? So let's save it for one more time. Our color gradient, drag everything down a little bit. Hold control, deselect the next layer. And this time we'll hit the space bar. That, drag everything down a little bit more. Hold control, deselect some more off the ends. All that good down, hold control, select some more off of the ends, drag everything down. Looks good. Select everything here, except for that one. This is the last one that we're going to adjust. Okay, so we'll hit save there. And that completes our audio meter. And now I'm gonna play a little bit of music so that you guys can see how audio affects this audio meter here.
you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, please let me know in the comment section below. If you guys have any ideas on any future Razer Chroma keyboard lighting designs, then definitely leave a comment and let me know what you guys want to see on a Razer keyboard. Once again, thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next video.